first application of stoichiometry. Um, with your application of stoichiometry, I'm going to talk about it in terms of the real world first, and then we'll apply it to chemistry from there. So um, some of you guys don't know because you haven't been in the classroom, but I'm a huge um, car, motorcycle, truck person. Um, so we're going to use just a figurative situation. Um, we're going to assume that all tires are the same size and all tires can go interchangeably into cars. So let's say that we're sitting in class and as we're sitting in class, I say, okay, we're going to go on a field trip. And when we go to a field trip, we're going to go to a place that has a lot of cars just sitting there waiting for people to buy, but they're sitting outside. And that person doesn't want the tires to corrode away while they're sitting out in the elements. So we get there and I say, I need everybody's help because we're going to drive off the lot as many cars as we can today. So I go up to the guy that's working there and I say, okay, how many cars do you have that are complete that are able to drive today? And he said, well, I have 27 car bodies that are complete, ready to go with gas and everything. But let me see how many tires I have out in my shed. So he goes out into the shed and when he goes to that there, he counts up 55 tires. So we have 27 complete cars without tires. We have 55 tires. How many cars are we gonna drive home with today? Well, in one situation, with the cars, without the tires, we have a possibility of driving home 27. With the tires, there's 55 of them, but four tires go on one car. So if we take my calculator, 55 divided by 4, we get 13.75. Now you have to have four tires per car, which means that we could have the possibility of driving away with 13 cars with the tires. How many are we driving home with today? Well, if you think about it, we could only drive home 13 complete cars. There's an excess of the cars without tires. We're gonna run out of tires before we run out of the car bodies. So I would need 13 of you, well, 12, because I'm driving one, obviously. 13 of you total, 13 of us total, to drive away with the cars. We're going to leave behind 14 of them that don't have tires. So we're limited by our number of tires. We have an excess of the car bodies. The same thing happens in chemistry. When we're looking at the chemistry component of it, we have something called a limiting reactant, where you start with two or three reactants, however many reactants you have. Usually for this class, we're gonna have just two reactants. And with your reactants, they go together in a chemical reaction. They you know, form together little compounds, and they keep making compounds, keep making compounds, keep making compounds. Eventually, one of those reactants is gonna run out. Like we ran out of car tires, we had to stop production. Same thing happens in a chemical reaction. It's going to keep putting components together until it runs out of one of the reactants. It's going to limit, limiting reactant, it's going to limit the production. So as we look at our math problems today, you're going to have something that is limited when it stops production. The other part is in excess. There is extra of it. Um, a lot of times it'll say, you have so much it's not going to run out. That means that it's not limiting. Um, it is in excess. So the limiting stops production. The excess is there in case you add more of the other reactant, then it could start production again. For example, let's say that he goes to a different barn and he finds 10 more tires. Now I can drive away with a couple more cars. So as you um, look at your ratios, well ratios, um, you have a certain number that could come together and then you have something that is in excess and something that is limited. Um, another way of looking at it in the real world, let's say that we are, I don't know, let's make grilled cheese sandwiches. And if we're making grilled cheese sandwiches, I have three loaves of bread in my house. Awesome, I have a lot of bread, but I have four pieces of cheese. So if we're making grilled cheese sandwiches and I need two pieces of bread and one piece of cheese on each sandwich, I have a lot of bread. Let's say that there's 20 slices in a loaf I have 60 pieces of bread. I can make a lot of sandwiches with that, 30 of them to be exact. 
but my four pieces of cheese that I have, I'm going to run out of first. So I put two pieces of bread, a piece of cheese, two pieces of bread, a piece of cheese, two pieces of bread, a piece of cheese. I think that was four. I'm out of cheese, as long as I actually said four. So you're going to run out of the cheese. The bread is in excess. So when you do these problems, the same thing is going to figure out or going to come together and we're going to figure out, okay, how much product can I make with this reactant? How much product can I make with this reactant? So you're going to do two gram to gram stoic problems. When you do your two gram to gram stoic problems, you're going to figure out how much product you can make in both cases. Now, when you figure out how much product you're going to make in both cases in grams, you're going to look at your just your answer and you're going to be able to tell which one is limiting and which one is in excess. So I'm going to do the math problems all together in just a second. This question right here, it says what is the limiting reactant is different than, let me go forward real quick, sorry, this one here where it says what mass. So there's a couple different ways that it can ask these questions. Um, with the couple ways that you can ask these questions, you need to figure out either what is the limiting reactant or what mass can be made. The limiting reactant, reactant, is a reactant that runs out first. So it makes the least amount of product. So if something says what is the limiting reactant, you have two answers that you're comparing. Like with the sandwich situation, we had 30 sandwiches possible with the bread four sandwiches possible with the cheese. I'm picking four because I'm running out of cheese before I run out of bread. So the limiting reactant makes the least amount of product. The other question that it might ask, it might say how much, like how many grams can be made. If it asks for an amount, you just circle the smaller of the two answers because that's the maximum amount that can be made. Um, with the sandwiches, we had 30 pieces of bread, we, so we could make 30 sandwiches. I had four pieces of cheese. I run out of cheese first, so I'm limited to four sandwiches. So that's how many I can make. Same thing happens with your answers. You're going to pick the smaller of the two amounts. And again, things come together in a certain ratio. So the reactants break apart, they go back together, break apart, go back together. But whenever you're making your product, one of them is going to run out first. So once you run out of that reactant, you cannot produce anything else. So one of the reactants is actually stopping the production. Okay, so I have my um, few example problems that we're going to do. I have three of them to be exact. Um, I have my document camera here. And the first question, it says, write the balanced reaction, or equation, sorry, um, for the reaction between lead 2 nitrate and sodium iodide to form sodium nitrate and lead 2 iodide. So I need a balanced reaction. To get my balanced reaction, I have lead 2 nitrate, so PbNO3,2, reacting with sodium iodide, NaI. I am forming sodium nitrate and lead to iodide. Once you have that, then you have to balance your reaction. So once we have our unbalanced reaction, we need to balance it. I've got two nitrate, there's two nitrate, two sodium, two sodium, two iodine, two iodine, one lead, one lead. That is a balanced reaction. Remember, it's typically helpful to put the ones in the problem just so you have them available in case you need them for your mole ratios. Now in the question here it says if I start with 25 grams of lead 2 nitrate, so I have 25 grams of this guy, and 50, oh, 0, 15 grams of my um, sodium iodide, how many grams of sodium nitrate can be formed? So I want to know how many grams of that can I make? So I'm going to do two problems. The first one, I'm going to start with my 25 grams of lead to nitrate, and I want to know how many grams of that product I can make. I'm going to do a second problem. The second problem, I'm going to start with my 15 grams of sodium iodide, figure out how much of that product I can make. In each of these cases, it's a gram to gram problem. 
So I know that I'm going to need some molar masses. For my molar masses, I'm going to need my um, lead to nitrate. I'm going to need sodium iodide and I'm going to need sodium nitrate. So when I go to find my molar masses, I need a periodic table. And I'm just going to put my molar masses up top up here just so I have them available when I need them. So lead to nitrate, I have one lead. Lead has a mass of 207.2. I have two nitrogen, which has a mass of 14.01. And I have six oxygen, so six times 16. So when I plugged it into my calculator, it looks like this. My molar mass for this compound is 331.22 grams. That's the mass of one. Sodium iodide, 22.99, plus 126.91. This one has a molar mass of 149.90 grams. And then this one, 22.99, plus 14.01, Plus my three oxygen is 48, 85. Ooh, that's a crazy five, sorry. Grams for the mass of one mole. So now that I have a balanced reaction and I have all of my molar masses, now I can actually do the two math problems. When I do my two math problems, I'm going to do them two separate gram to gram problems. The first one, you start with your 25.0 grams of Pb. NO3, 2. I first need to get rid of grams and go to moles using my molar mass. The 331.22 grams is the mass of one mole of my PB, NO3, 2. So that got rid of grams, it went to moles. Now I use my mole to mole ratio. My mole to mole ratio for every one mole of my PB, NO3, 2. I have two moles of the NaNO3. Then in the last step, I need to take my moles back to grams. So one mole, molar mass is always one mole, is 85.0 grams. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room there. Um, so that got rid of moles, it went to grams. I'm gonna get an answer here in a minute. I'll pick up my calculator. I'm going to do a second math problem though first, where I'm gonna start with my 15 grams of the NAI, and I wanna know again how many grams of the sodium nitrate I'm going to make in that case. So same process, I'm going to take my grams and go to moles. Molar mass of sodium iodide is 149.90 grams for the mass of one mole. Grams is gone, that took me to moles. Now I do a mole to mole ratio. Mole to mole ratio says for every two moles of sodium iodide, I have two moles of sodium um, nitrate. Last step, I'm gonna take my grams, go back to moles. Sorry, my moles back to grams, sorry. One mole of NaNO3 has a molar mass again of 85.00 grams. And I'm gonna get an answer there. So I'm gonna get my calculator. When I get my calculator here, I'm gonna do the top one first. So I'm gonna take 25 times one times two times 85 divided by open parentheses 331.22 times one, times one, which is just the same answer. First number has three sig figs. So I get 12.8 grams of NaNO3. I'm gonna do my second problem. 15 times one, times two, times 85, divided by, open parentheses, 149.90 times 2 times 1, close up my parentheses. So when I get my answer here, I've got three sig figs that I started with. So I have 8.51 grams of NaNO3. So now I have two different answers. 
with my two different answers, I want to know the maximum amount of my sodium nitrate that I can make. The maximum amount that I can make is the smaller of my two answers. So the maximum amount that I can make is 8.51 grams. I'm going to run out of sodium iodide before I can make the 12.8 grams of sodium nitrate. Now in the second question here, it's the other way that it could be worded. This question says, what is the limiting reactant in the reaction described in problem two? So when it says, what is the limiting reactant? The answer is a reactant. The reactant that runs out first is your limiting reactant. So my two answer possibilities are either sodium, sodium iodide or lead to nitrate. So when I look at these two, the one that is going to run out first is the NAI. And usually I just put something like LR equals NAI or LR is NAI. You can say that however you want to. Um, but this is the answer for the second question when it says, what is the limiting reactant? Your answer is a reactant. You still have to do the math to get that answer but we run out of my sodium iodide first because it only makes 8.51 grams. Now on the next problem here, it says what mass of water can be produced by four grams of hydrogen reacting with 16 grams of oxygen? So on this one, um, again, we need a balanced reaction. So you have hydrogen reacting with oxygen. We are making water. We have to balance this guy out. We're gonna put a two and a two and then it goes to number one, goes right there, but we typically write in that number one. You're gonna set up two gram to gram problems. The first gram to gram problem, you're gonna start with your four grams of hydrogen. We wanna know how many grams of water you can make in that case. Your second problem, you're gonna start with your 16 grams of oxygen. Again, we want to know in that case, how much water can we make? So the, um, Problem is balanced. Your molar masses that you're going to need is all of them. Hydrogen has a mass of 2.02 grams for the mass of one mole. Oxygen is 32 grams for the mass of one mole. And then water is 18.02 grams for the mass of one mole. Oop. So I have my molar masses, I have my balanced equation, I'm able to do the math problems. First step, get rid of grams, take it to moles. Grams is no good for a stoic problem. So to get rid of grams, I'm gonna use my molar mass. 2.02 grams of hydrogen is the mass of one mole of hydrogen. Next step, mole to mole ratio. Two moles of hydrogen will produce two moles of water. Then in the last step, you're going to take your moles of water and turn it into grams because it wants to know what mass. So one mole of H2O has a mass of 18.02 grams. Moles is gone, moles, grams, grams. We're gonna get an answer here in a second. We're gonna set up our second math problem. 16 grams of oxygen. Grams has to go to moles first. So the mass of one mole of oxygen is 32 grams. Next step is mole to mole ratio. One mole of oxygen will create two moles of water. And then in the last step, I have to take my moles of water back to grams. One mole of H2O has a mass of 18.02 grams. Moles of water is gone, moles of oxygen is gone, grams of oxygen is gone. I'm gonna get two different answers here. So put my calculator, I'm going to take four, how about four, times two times 18.02 divided by, open parentheses, 2.02 times two. This number has one sig fig to start with in the four grams, so I can only have one sig fig in my answer, so that's 40 grams of H2O. In my second problem, I start with 16 grams, so 16 times 2 times 18.02 divided by, open parentheses, 32 times 1 times 1. This number has two sig figs, so my answer 
can only have two sig figs, and that's 18 grams of water. So the question here says, what mass of water can be produced? So the maximum amount of water that can be produced is the smaller of the two amounts. So I can only make 18 grams. You just circle the smaller of the two amounts. That is your answer. You ignore the 40 grams because you're going to run out of oxygen before you use up all of your hydrogen. One more. This question says, what is the limiting reactant? So again, we have another um, problem here. But this one, because it says, what is our limiting reactant? Our answer is a reactant, not a number. So this one says a two gram sample of ammonia, this is ammonia right here, is mixed with four grams of oxygen. What is the limiting reactant? So I have two grams of this guy. I have four grams of this guy. I want to know what is the limiting reactant. So I wanna know what runs out first. In this problem, it doesn't tell me which product to choose. That's a good thing. You can pick whichever one you want if it doesn't specify. So when it says just what is the limiting reactant, pick one of the products, but you can't have commitment issues. Once you pick it, you have to stick with it. For example, let's say that you just always pick the first one. So that would mean that you're going to take both of these numbers and you're gonna figure out how many grams of nitrogen monoxide you can make. Or you can always pick the last one. Um, so maybe you take your ammonia, figure out how much water. Take your oxygen, figure out how much water. I pick the one that's the easiest to find the molar mass. I know the molar mass of both of these, but water, most people know that molar mass after a little bit of doing these problems. Um, so you could pick that one. You could pick your nitrogen monoxide. I don't care, you can pick whichever one you want. I'm gonna pick water though, because we just found that molar mass is 18.02 grams in the last problem. So we wanna know how many grams of this we can make in our math to answer that question, what is the limiting reactant? I will need some molar masses. Um, so with your molar masses, we just found the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams for the mass of one mole. Oxygen is 32 grams for the mass of one mole. And then ammonia is 17.04 grams for the mass of one mole. So they all look like that. I'm just trying to write very quickly, sorry. So I know what I need to do in both of my problems. I have my molar masses. I don't have a balanced equation yet. So I have one nitrogen and one nitrogen. I have three hydrogen and two hydrogen. So if this one is three and this one is two, I know that they're gonna have to go up to the same number. So I'm gonna make them both six. So now I have six hydrogen and six hydrogen. Now I need to fix my um, nitrogen, I have two. So there's two. So now I need to fix my oxygen. Right here I have two plus three. Two plus three is five. So the only way of getting five over here is by putting a two and a half. That doesn't work because either you have an oxygen molecule or you don't, you can't have a half. So what we do if that happens, you double everything. So my two is gonna become a four. My two and a half becomes a five. My two here becomes a four and my three becomes a six. So now I have everything balanced out. So after I have everything balanced out, then I need to run my math problems. So I have two grams of ammonia and I have four grams of oxygen and I'm gonna do both of those problems. So my two grams of ammonia, I have to get rid of grams and go to moles first. by using my molar mass, then mole to mole ratio. For every four moles of NH3, I have, I'm using water, so six moles of H2O. Then I need to take my moles back to grams, so one mole of water has a molar mass of 18.02 grams. I'll do the math in a second when I get my calculator. Now I'm gonna do my second math problem. I need to take my grams of oxygen and turn it into moles. So 32 grams is the mass of one mole of oxygen. Then I do my mole to mole ratio. Mole to mole ratio says for every five moles of oxygen, I have six moles of water. 
Then I do um, my moles back to grams by using my molar mass. One mole of water has a mass of 18.02 grams. So now I have two math problems to do. Again, I'm gonna get my calculator. And when I get my calculator here, I'm gonna multiply across the top first. Two times six times 18.02 divided by open parentheses 17.04 times four this number here has three sig figs, so my answer can only have three sig figs, so 3.17 grams of water. My second math problem, I'm going to do the same thing. Multiply across the top first. Four times six times 18.02 divided by open parentheses, 32 times five times one. This number again is three sig figs, so I need three sig figs in my answer, 2.70 grams of water. So this question says, which is the limiting reactant? So I want to know which reactant is gonna run out first. Is it ammonia or is it oxygen? So the smaller of the two amounts is right here. It's the 2.70, it's behind my head, sorry. Um, let me see if I can move this up, there we go. Um, it's the 2.70 grams of water is the smaller of the two amounts. So that means that my limiting reactant makes the less amount, so it's oxygen. So my limiting reactant is oxygen for this problem. Yes, you have to do all of that work. However, your reactant that runs out first is your oxygen, not your ammonia. Your ammonia is in excess. I hope that that helps. I know this was really long. Everything kind of got, got out of hand, sorry. Um, but if you guys have any questions, make sure that you email me, mgable at uh, crosbyisd.org.